Hello and a very warm welcome to you at the M1 Asian Netball Championships 2018 here at the OCBC Arena, part of the Singapore Sports Hub. And today's game is Japan up against India. And what could be an interesting matchup given some of the results we've seen earlier. I'm joined by former sports editor Philip Goh here with us. What do we think uh, is going to happen here, Philip? Well, very good afternoon, Shazad. I think we are in for a really exciting match. Uh, two evenly matched teams, both finishing second in their respective groups. And we've got the uh, opening attack here happening. Yeah, India in blue, Japan in red. And an opportunity to get things going almost immediately. A job well done there, uh, just capitalizing off their first possession. We now see Japan coming back. Well, looking at some of the results uh, we've had earlier on in these championships, of course, the preliminary round, which started on the 1st of September as Japan missed that opportunity, was uh, three in a group. And uh, India were in Group B, Japan in Group A. Japan started off, well, they, they got a bit of a beating there. They lost... 88-13 to Malaysia, one of the pre-tournament favourites. Well, not a surprise there, uh, Shazad. I would say that uh, Malaysia being the not just the uh, the reigning Asian champions, reigning Southeast Asian champions as well, uh, they were expected to top the group, which they duly did. And uh, it was uh, an interesting result, I would say. 88-13, mm. not exactly, you know, um, uncompetitive. But, you know, Japan are a very young team. Well, very to young. compound uh, their woes, uh, it got... Well, it got better, actually, for Japan. In fact, they won against Maldives 35-34. Yeah, and, and that's how uh, they ended up second in the uh, in the group. And now we see Japan putting themselves on the board. Yep, first uh, points for them. First point for them. Yeah, arguably the match of the tournament so far. Just the one point in it between uh, Japan and the Maldives. Uh, for India, well, they were up against neighbours Sri Lanka. And also at the end of a big... Uh, defeat 101 29 but Sri Lanka of course or also one of the pre-tournament favorites Philip. they are they are Shazad. I mean um, they are after all a four-time winners of this particular tournament they still lead the charts right now uh, in all editions of this tournament Sri Lanka has four titles followed by Singapore three Malaysia two uh, we see India getting on board again there three one now yep. to uh, India Kirti there scoring for India and uh, India bounced back as well in their second game, just like Japan did. And they uh, were up against Chinese Taipei, winning that one 75-25. And that's how they finished second. So all teams that finished second as Kirti once again adds to a tally. That was a bit of a curiosity there, uh, Shazad. I mean, this is a, a sport, after all, that is played uh, mainly in Commonwealth countries. Mm. And uh, we've got the two neighbours, India and Sri Lanka, facing off in the group stage. And, uh, you know, there's such a disparity of, a, of a, or rather a gulf in the standards between Sri Lanka and India. You, you expect India to be a lot closer to Sri Lanka. Yeah, that's a bit of a surprise, isn't it? It is, as you say, uh, one of the archetypal Commonwealth sports uh, along with uh, cricket and uh, not particularly played much at the Commonwealth Games. Only started in 1998. But I have to say I see a lot of positives here. I mean, both teams that we see on court right now, they're all relatively young. Uh, if they can continue to work on this, to build a nice base of players, I can see them going far in mm. this game, right, given the resources that they have at home. Yeah, these two teams last played each other, in fact, in, at these uh, Asian uh, Netball Championships back in 2014. And it actually was uh, a pretty close match, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Um, India uh, went on to beat Japan 60-52 to 52 in that edition. In fact, it was played right here. The 2014 edition of the of the uh, tournament was played here in Singapore. Uh, it went off to Thailand in 2016. That's the last edition that was won by Malaysia. Uh, but you know that that game um, that India won 60 to 52, and they went on to finish six while Japan finished 10. And we see Japan getting on the scoreboard uh, for a second time. Yep, Osone there scoring. But we'll say India at the moment just a little better with the ball handling and. The shooting average much, much better, in fact. A bit of an injury there for the for the wing attack from India. Uh, Mega Chaudhry, she seems to be limping a bit. 
But uh, I, you know, it's quite apparent if you're watching right now that uh, India has a slight um, uh, height advantage. I think on average their players are a bit taller than the than the Japan uh, Japanese players, and uh, I think they're making full use of it right now. Yeah, absolutely right. When you look at the average height of this side, uh, it is certainly 176 centimeters. In Japan, well, it's uh, a, a whopping 12 centimeters less. That's four inches in the uh, old imperial system, you know, <laughs> if you don't mind, just, uh, for old timers like myself. Uh, India also has a younger team uh, by the looks of it, 21.4 years in average. Uh, Japan, 23, uh, nearly 24, 23.6. As Japan come forward here, and uh, it's India who are five goals in front at the moment. Japan looking to try and narrow that gap, and they are struggling just a little bit right in front of the net there. I think the uh, the tall Indian defense is putting them under a lot of pressure right now. Uh, goal keeper and goal defense there. Uh, goal defense, Ranjita Jagadish, and uh, goalkeeper Guprit Kaur. Yoda there scoring just Japan's third goal. Well, in a match like this, they really need to make the most of all the opportunities there. And uh, we're seeing that um, right now, uh, just on a very rough average, uh, uh, the Indians have got a higher scoring average. Yeah, when we look at their the, the shooting average, it's 78.8% compared to Japan's uh, just 60. And it's being shown up here at the moment. And it is quite stark, that high difference that we talked about. Mm. They're do using a lot of lob passes as well, overhead passes, the uh, Indians. I like to think that a country like Japan would actually get a lot better in this game as a, as we know they are very technical when it comes to sports and you know in a, in a game like netball there's a plenty of uh, technical skills that you need to pick up uh, how to move the ball around and uh, even shooting as well so uh, with uh, with exposure experience a fair bit of coaching as well I think they can definitely I can s definitely see um, Japan rising further up in the rankings and in fact right now they're they don't actually have a ranking in the year. Yeah, in fact, neither do India, which is uh, also a little bit of a surprise. The highest ranked side here is, in fact, Singapore. And just to remind you that this year there's a record 12 nations taking part at yeah. uh, these M1 Asian Netball Championships. And the top two, Philip, get to go to the World Cup next year, Liverpool. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's the uh, that's a prize, isn't it? That's a prize that everyone's looking at, not apart from just winning this tournament, is uh, those two spots. And uh, as far as I can see, there are three very, very good contenders leading, you know, try vying for those two spots. Mm. Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Sri Lanka, of course. Yep, and they are all, of course, in uh, the group with all the winners. Includes Hong Kong as well, so that will certainly be something to watch out for. They'll be in action later on this evening, those sides. Uh, Japan are just struggling a little bit with their ball handling. You can see a lot of overarm throws here from the Indian side, and, and that is taking advantage of their height. Yeah. So it is. It is. It is a game of contrast right now. The Indians, the Indian players are going for height. The Japanese player going mm. for low passes. So yeah. Working on their various strengths there. And, and talking of strengths and, and height, Philip, the, the one player that you and I were quite keen to see was Palavi Kumai, who's two meters tall, by the way. Oh, so and the best shooting. Me, yeah. <laughs> you and me both. Um, Eighty-six point six percent her shooting uh, efficiency, her average, and yeah, it's a shame as Japan finally pull one back. Nine five. Yeah, uh, she's injured. I think. I yeah, believe she is. She is. She looks injured. We are looking at them lining up just now for the introductions, and uh, she looked like she uh, wasn't moving. Walking pretty gingerly, yeah, wasn't she? So perhaps she could actually get better um, for the matches for the rest of the week. Reminder that uh, for the uninitiated, it's four quarters of 15 minutes with uh, four minutes between each quarter and eight minutes at half time. Well, have you have you played the game before, Shazai? I have. I have indeed. Uh, mixed netball a few times. Enjoyed myself. It's pretty exhausting, I have to say. I mean, uh, <laughs> it's I, hard I, work. <laughs> Good shot there from Japan's uh, goal shooter, uh, Keiko Yoda. That's uh, 6-10 now, they're trailing. 
as we see another attack by India. Neat little pass there. And Kirti once again makes no mistake. She's having a, a very good time there with her shooting average. At this point, five goals. Not too bad. You don't want to let that get away from you. Well, there's plenty of time left in the game. Uh, She's at three quarters to come. Uh, plenty of time to make up the difference. Remember, only two players attacking are allowed inside that circle. That's mm. the goal scorer and the goal attacker. GS and GA, as indicated on their bibs, only they're the ones allowed to score. Uh, Kirti is doing the business at the moment for India. 12-6 now, India in front. And they have possession. There is Kirti. She just saw the center who was free. Ruchi, who now has the ball. And that's actually really well done. Intercepted very nicely by the goal defense, Rei Kagami. That's better, isn't it, Philip? That gives him a bit of confidence. And yeah, I, it's, 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 it's very important that um, you don't let this game get away from you. And um, actions like that where you, know, you, you stop the ball from getting through, that would just give the uh, team a bit of a Philip. Nice pun as well there. <laughs> from my uh, fellow commentator. <laughs> so Japan, six behind now. We said we would just try to restrict in as much as possible. With about four minutes left here. And she has not had very good fortune with her shooting, I'm afraid. Not at all. Um, I'm surprised. Uh, Keiko Yoda there. Uh, I, have to, I have to say... The this, this is one game where you really cannot let slip opportunities like that. There is Yoda now. Uh, Japan managed to turn over the ball. The center there. Now Yoda with the chance to redeem herself. Which she does. Much better. Good player from the Japanese. 7-12. Uh, I'm just doing a quick check on uh, Keiko Yoda there. She's one of the more experienced players in the squad. Uh, 35 years of age. Uh, she looks like uh, she will be calling on all the experience as uh, Japan try to find them f uh, find their way back in this game. As you say there, Phil, uh, lots of low passes generally. Lower center of gravity. Quite quick now. They're just picking up the pace a little bit. Well, interestingly, uh, Shazad, we've got uh, uh, two players in the Japan squad that doesn't look like they have Japanese-sounding names. I like to see them in action sometime during this game as well. You're absolutely right. As we now see Nami Osone. Yeah, the two in question, of course, Tilini Pereira and Helanka Virasekara. Both of them of uh, Sri Lankan origin, and that might help just boost the side a little bit, given Sri Lanka's strength in the sport. And once again, it's. Disappointing shooting as far as Japan are concerned. Well, they still have possession, so there's still something to come from this. It's good moving, though. Good movement in the, within the D area. Just managed to get onto that. And it's been a, a good couple of minutes there for the goal scorer. Japan goal scorer, Keiko Yoda. A couple of goals back. It's now just four. Yeah, much better. And India, I haven't really seen enough of the ball. But a chance here. I'm not sure whether she was kind of caught in two minds there. The goal scorer, Gopala Krishnapa. But that was a good effort there. Recovering quickly, India as they. Uh, get on the scoreboard yet again 14 to 9 now in front well Japan might just sense that the momentum is with them they can narrow this gap a little bit more before the end of this first quarter they have a chance they had a chance there in fact to to score their tenth get to double figures also nicely done by Jagadish 
It's, it's been a good match so far, Shazad. And I think it's good, good end to an end action here. Yeah, absolutely. And, and we did say this would be a relatively close affair. Kirti there. And we're into that final minute. It's whiz by, I have to say, of this first quarter. Contact there. So Japan regained possession. Again, more contact. Oh. <laughs> Just a little keen to get things underway there, Phil. Well, you're not going to get you, you you're not going to get by with the umpires here. Yeah. yeah, they're keeping a very close eye on it. And uh, well, Japan really have to make this one uh, less than 30 seconds on on the clock for them to get something narrow the gap to just a mere five points. Uh, India have managed to intercept. They've turned it over. Now can they turn it on with about 15 seconds left? It's a very good opportunity and it's well handled there. It's great work from Gopala Krishnapa. As India score the goal just before the whistle for the quarter. Will they get it into the circle? It doesn't look like they will. And it's uh, India who lead at the end of the first quarter, 
Welcome back to the Asian Netball Championships here in this match between Japan and India. Start of the second quarter, India leading 16-9. And what did you make of those first 15 minutes, Philip? I think it's very competitive, actually. I don't think the uh, score is reflective reflective of what's happening on court in, in, in the sense that, you know, uh, both teams are giving it all. And I think with a bit of adjustment, uh, Japan can be a lot closer uh, than the scoreboard would suggest. 17-9 right now as... Uh, India hold a very decent lead of uh, eight goals. Kirti immediately uh, adding to that tally when she uh, scored. And Yoda again not having much luck out under the pole. And that's uh, nicely done. They're now 18-9, double the score, and maybe just picking it up a notch. Yeah, uh, it, it, they, they have been threatening to do that, um, given their height advantage. I think there's plenty of uh, of opportunities for them to just keep on stretching that lead. And with that kind of scoring that we're seeing from the goal attack, uh, Nami Os oh, sorry, that's not Nami Osuna, it's Kirti then. Um, I think, you know, Japan has their work cut out for them if they want to start making some inroads as to that lead that they are conceding right now. Well, that was uh, some, some much better play there from uh, Japan. Still looking for the opportunity to get it out to the goal attacker there. And that is more of what they want to see from Nami Osone. By the way, if you uh, just happen to walk away in those two minutes, you would have missed some very fun celebrations for the Japan captain. Nami Hagiwara, who certainly enjoyed having everyone here being told it was her 23rd birthday today. So many congratulations to her. Many best wishes from all of us. And she was so enthusiastic as well, wasn't she? <laughs> <laughs> she enjoyed it. And also seemed to indicate everyone else got into it. There's a, there's a good spirit in the camp. There is. Uh, I've always enjoyed being here at the, uh, the M1 um, Asian Netball Championships. Uh, it's o there's always a nice, you know, positive atmosphere. Absolutely right. And as the day progresses, you'll also see more and more people coming into the OCBC arena, especially when you have some of the big teams playing a little later in the day. Singapore obviously grabbing the prime slots. They'll be playing in the evenings at 7 p.m. Yes, and there'll be uh, the match today. They'll be going up against Sri Lanka. That is going to be a humdinger, as they call it. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. That one I uh, can't wait for. Now, Osone, a couple of goals for her. They just want to keep at least within touching distance. Nearly intercepted there by the uh, Japanese team defense. Uh, very good handling skills by Kirti. It take a lot of time to size up the shot there. <laughs> she just quite instinctively just yeah. goes for it. And she's been very successful as well. There's Yoda. Osone. Now Hagiwara. You've got to be a certain distance away. Yoda was just thinking about shooting. Again, it's off the rim. Disappointing. Nice ball up to the uh, wing attack for India. Mega Chaudhry, who's the tallest player on court today. This time, unusual for Gopala Krishnapa. Hagiwara, now Kagami. When they're in full flow, Phil, they, they're pretty decent, the Japanese. They're quick, aren't they? They are, they are. And I, and I think you know, this particular attack, we see them you know, really stretching the, uh, the Indian defense. And a good 
outcome there as well. Uh, as you see, a better scoring average there from the Japanese. Certainly very pacey. Nami Asuna. Kirti again. Oh dear, she went right over, didn't she? Gopala Krishnapa, that's better. After missing earlier on. That's a turnover there for Japan. Now India. Kirti again, she doesn't look very happy with that though. <laughs> but India now on 23, Japan on 12. They really have increased that lead quite significantly. Again, nicely done by Kirti. Now double the score there. Uh, India 24, Japan 12. Looks like India are, are starting to run away with this match. Yeah, double the score again now. Japan have shown some resolve a little bit earlier on. They brought it down to four points at one stage. So they're going to have to do something pretty special to come back into this. And this is what we're talking about now. It's this part here, which they have been a little disappointing, but that is much better. Osone makes no mistake. And that high advantage is the big problem there because it's easy to get it up to players like Kirti, who does the business. I have to say Kirti is the standout player right now on the court. Um, she's got the right moves. Uh, she, knew, she knows exactly how to uh, take the right steps as well, setting up herself for the shots. And uh, most of the shots have been, have been successful as well. So yeah, I guess that's where the difference is right now between India and Japan. Yeah, absolutely. They have taken most of their opportunities. Uh, Natalie's haven't. They went low there. Obstruction of the player without the ball. Looks like a slight change of tactics now for Japan by the looks of it. They're uh, pushing the uh, scoring responsibility over to uh, Nami Osone. Which she can understand, I think, given uh, her shooting average is, at the moment, a lot better yeah. than Yoda's. Maybe Yoda is there to provide sagely advice on how things should be happening up there in the, uh, in the D. There is Yoda right now. Remember, oh players well could be in certain well. areas. This is much better from Japan. And that is when Japan are really at their best, aren't they? Fantastic movement and speed from them. I enjoyed that. Um, to the it's probably one of the moves of the match so far. Definitely. I'd like to see that on replay. Again, they're getting themselves in some very good positions there, but this is the problem. Giving it away, the turnover there by India, and they can now counter. Well, you can't blame them, though, Chuta. I mean, it's just the, 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 the reach of mm. the, of the uh, Indian players. Um, that height advantage is really coming into full use here. Yeah, there was obstruction there. Good move. Nice little fake. And now we've got Yoda. Again, more obstruction for Yoda. Can he bring it down to single figures? Yes, she does. 16, 25. Remember, it was uh, 12 at one point, so they have done much better here. Chopping up for the ball. Not easy. Well, that, was a, that was a seven goal differential in the, in the first quarter, but in this one so far, um, India have outscored Japan 10 to. 7, 10 to 8 actually, so Japan have been far more competitive after conceding a string of goals at the start of this quarter. Yeah, they have certainly narrowed that gap and it's just that first quarter that's hurt them a little bit. And Kirti, prolific and accurate. 11-8, just about 4 minutes. Possession there. B 
the other way. Don't think they heard that. Goal attacks possession Kirti. He's going to get a free pass there. Twenty-eight seventeen. Gopala Krishnapa has been almost as good as Kirti on the handling. Yeah, very good, isn't it? It's just a brilliant move from Kirti. Uh, uh, she's, she's just moving so well in the, in the scoring zone, making it very hard for the uh, Japanese defenders to actually get anywhere near her. Very decisive way of playing. Yes, Kagami. Not Hagiwara. This is Osone. Oh, in a good position. Again, she has found herself in a very, very good position. Japan have had a couple of those very good moves. That just went out of play. And now, can Japan just quickly pick things up here? Japan finishing eighth at the Asian Netball Championships in 2016. India did not participate. That was uh, hosted by Thailand. Japan have already done better now with that last goal there from Yoda uh, than they did in the first quarter. They scored nine in the first quarter and they've already scored ten and we still have some time on the clock. Yeah, definitely an improvement from them. I do feel that India will probably get more than the 16 they got in that first quarter at the end of this one. India have uh, played at the Commonwealth Games uh, in Nepal. Finished last though, 12th out of 12. And uh, what about at the World Cup? Well, India have never been to the World Cup. I think that at the moment may be a step too far for them. Pala Krishna Pa again doing the business. It's just nice drills there. I'm, I'm, she's like, I think the basic moves for netball. You're seeing it from both teams as well. Um, but India seems to have uh, mastered that last lasted mm. a lot better. Well, sorry, it does it again. There, there was a. And actually, there's only two points in it still, with a minute and a half to go. Well, two points in this quarter, yes. So, pretty good. Much better. Two goals, the difference. Kirti will ensure that goes to three. 31-21 to India right now. Japan on the attack, with the clock running into the final minute of the second quarter. And they pull one back, <laughs> just an interchange of passes there. Good play there for Japan. And again, down to two. We're into the final few seconds, around 40 or so left. Can India again score a late one like they did at the end of the first quarter? 
Japan will do everything they can to prevent this. And it might be a bit of a problem there for the goalkeeper. The Japan goalkeeper it looks like she hurt herself, Miyushina. Time for Japan. Put one more in if they can. Obstruction there. And again, more obstruction. Nicely done. There's a big cheer around as well. The OCBC Arena. And that will be it. And India go in to halftime with a 32-23 lead. But it's been a much better performance from Japan. It was 16-14 in that second quarter. Okay, go again. Go. Good try, good try. Next one. Go. 
We are back at the OCBC Arena for the M1 Asian Netball Championships 2018. India up against Japan. India leading 32-23 at the moment. And uh, Phil, it's, yeah. been, it's been good, especially the Japanese. They, they've really pulled it back in that second quarter, haven't they? They definitely have. I mean, uh, stepping up when, uh, with uh, Okone, uh, Osone there, um, getting a very good average there. He's, she, she's got, what, 11 now for 12 attempts in the uh, second quarter. Yeah, that's absolutely after, right. That's after, after Yo, um, Yoda took the uh, bulk of the shooting responsibility in the first quarter, scoring just five out of nine there. So uh, it's quite quite a good quite a good um, quite a good percentage now for the Japanese. They've really stepped it up. They've uh, pushed their shooting accuracy all the way up to uh, 89. You, you, I think your your assessment of of Japan sort of changing things around a little bit is is absolutely spot on there, Philip. Because if you look at uh, Yoda. In quarter one, she had nine opportunities. Quarter two, just four. Whereas, look at Sonia, she had seven in the first quarter and 12 in the second. So, she certainly took on the bulk of the scoring responsibilities and responded superbly. Yes, and in, in fact, um, during the halftime break, I saw uh, the, uh, Japan warming up another player, mm. uh, also wearing either GA or GS there. So, I think they might be looking at a uh, personnel change 
sometime in this uh, well, second half. It's, it's interesting because Yoda has now moved to goalkeeper. That he, she has, hasn't she? So that would indicate that they have certainly decided to change things up a little bit here. And uh, she just did very well. She had interception there. So that might be a little indication of where we're at. So we've got a, a new goal shooter there. Let's just figure out who she is. Here's the uh, center, Fagiwara. I think it looks like Nagai is the one who's uh, now wearing the uh, goal shooter's dip. Rio Nagai. So she'll be the new one taking on responsibilities. Uh, we were we were saying as well, first quarter, the shooting percentage was only 56% for Japan as Kirti adds another to a tally. And in the second quarter, much, much better. 14 out of 16 they got, the uh, Japanese. So back, oh, up to 88%. That's so much better, Philip, when they... When they, when you look at at the difference in the yes, two quarters, uh, fifty-six percent in the in the first quarter, and that's where it hurt, and we saw that reflected in the uh, in the overall score when they were trailing uh, nine to sixteen in the first quarter. They closed it up, uh, or rather, they did not concede such a, a large, uh, a wide margin in the second quarter. Uh, Gopala Krishnapa, eight out of nine in the first quarter, five out of six in the second, and. Kirti, 8 out of 8 and 11 out of 12. She, I think we were saying, is a stand-up performer here. India, 94% in the first quarter, but they just dipped a little bit, 89, which would indicate, Philip, that it's very, very tight in the second quarter, 89% as opposed to Japan's 88. Yes, and I think it will remain uh, tight throughout this game now, now that both teams have sort of gotten to their stride. Uh, and I think the key, obviously, is for... Uh, India to get the ball up to Kirti and uh, for Japan it's a matter of getting it into the, the assured hands of of the goal attack which is uh, Nami Osone it's India's possession now as they try to move the ball up the court are they able to keep that in well that may be a little bit of luck there for India Chaudhry, Kopala Krishnapa, gets it in. Obstruction there. Oh, Japan are moving the ball around. It's, it's, it's just a matter of making sure that they get the best shooting chance which they have right now Sony unlike her to miss Rio Nagan Nagai. Nagai yeah Gopala Krishnapa continues her hot streak at the moment continuing from that second quarter only Two goals in it at the moment, with India leading this quarter 6-4, but 38-27 overall. Well, that change seems to be bearing fruit here, Philip. It is, and uh, these two teams are going possession for, uh, for possession right now. Jesse, uh, if we're looking at this, the scoring in this quarter alone is 6 to India, 5 to Japan. Oh, lovely handling there from Kirti. Shooting... Not so much. A rare, That's a rare mistake. One. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, Gopala Krishnapa is picking up the slack whenever there is some. Oh, that's a strange turnover there. Right from the uh, center circle. And that's going to give India the opportunity to stretch this lead a little. It's 30 to 29 now so, uh, with India ahead. And again, Kirti back to her scoring ways. And they've hit 40 now. So it's 40 28, 12 point gap. 
And that is where they have this huge advantage, of course. Literally and figuratively, the Indians, they're using it well. Japan will need to work their way back quickly or else the game will start running away from them again. Yeah, it's to four points, now down to three. They'll have to look at a few turnovers, defend much better if they want to stay in this. The gap is now 12. Which she's done well. Kirti. Oh, she's gone right over. That's surprising. It's it's unusual, not, isn't it? Yeah, not been like a in this uh, third quarter. Hagiwara. Was it a combination of the attention she was getting from the Japanese defender or maybe just feeling a bit too comfortable with that lead right now? Sitting at 12 points, 11 points. Uh, Japan scoring as we speak. Good moves there. It's working this is what we've seen again. This interchange of passing. An obstruction there. One point in it, Philip. This is their best quarter so far. One point in this quarter. Yep. Absolutely right. So ten point gap in the um, in the ga in the game still. Forty one thirty one uh, in India's favour. Japan will need to start winning the next two quarters if they want to find a way back. Uh, perhaps for uh, what looks right now to be uh, a s just very slim chance of victory. Well, what's great here is that they've prevented the Indians from scoring. And they have possession here and a chance to draw level in this quarter. Just give them a little bit of a boost, wouldn't it? They've gone for it here. It's 9-all in this quarter, 32-41 overall. I mean, it is a long time still in this quarter, Philip, but if they can eke out a win in this quarter, it just gives them such a boost, doesn't it? And that, will, that will certainly give our match here a nice rousing finish, wouldn't it? So we just got some confirmation there, uh, Shazad, that there have been uh, no subs, but it looks very much like a swapping of positions there. For the Japanese player. So Gopala Krishnapa with a chance just to put India back on level terms for a short while there. Japan were in front, which would have been absolutely brilliant for them. come India again they've just seemed to pick up the pace a little bit I think they might have just been stung into action there nice little shot there by Kuzi just ball creeping into the net We've got Japan back on attack again. Very, very quick. Near seconds between the uh, center pass to another goal from Japan. Japan, would you believe it, leading 12-11. Again, just failing to control that. Kupanla Krishnapa. And oh, it's been back with Japan. I mean, scoring at a rapid pace here, Shazam. We've got four minutes left on the clock. Uh, Already 23 goals scored in this um, in this quarter. This is much better from Japan. It's the movement 
the movements that's, that's gaining them the advantage. Oh, Sone the does well. A brave overhead pass as well over the tall Indian oh, defense. That was a chance, wasn't it? That was a good chance to just open it up a little bit more. And those are the kind of opportunities they'll rue later on. And India managed to draw level in this quarter through Kirti. She does that hop skip move really well. Yeah. She's at the Kirti. She's done that a lot, hasn't she? Yeah. She is allowed that one step. Yep. And uh, she does it and she still stays in balance before she takes a shot and has been really, really effective. Just gains her that one extra, maybe three or four feet nearer to the net. Makes the shot a lot easier. Wow, that's two opportunities now that Japan have not taken in very, very good positions. That's just given India that little Philip now to take advantage. And they go back into the lead for the first time in the last couple of minutes. Yes, they do. Just a bit of disappointment there for Japan because they've brought it down to just eight overall in this scoreline. And some of the old problems have come back to afflict them in terms of scoring. Kirti does well. Well, it's the old spotting cliche, isn't it? Uh, she's had a game of margins here. Just, you know, two opportunities gone, and then next thing you know, um, your, op your, your opponents make their shots. And now passes are g just going astray. They've just seem to have lost their way just when they started to take the initiative. I wonder whether it got to them for a little bit that they had got themselves into an excellent position. And India asserting, reasserting control. Three quick goals there for yeah. India. And they still have the possession. So, you know, this could be the decisive spell in this game when India puts the game out of uh, Japan's reach. They did accelerate all of a sudden. So it's a shot taking by, by India that I'm really most, most impressed with, to be honest with you, uh, Shazad. And they've been very quick on their feet, uh, very decisive in, in taking their shots as well and just giving Japan no chance to regroup or to put themselves in a proper defensive position. Getting that little hop. And it's given them all of a sudden. And sometimes, and I'm not saying that this happened, but sometimes that maybe they're just lulled into a false sense of security. They were comfortable. And you, you just need to be stung into action, don't you? And when the Japanese took the lead for the first time, it has awoken the... The Indian side have just gone a little sharper, haven't they? They have, they have. Uh, it's very apparent now. And um, to me, that's like six unanswered points. Yep, yep, that's right. Because they were twelve, they were twelve eleven at one point. Yeah. Uh, well Japan it was seven. Yeah. It was seven unanswered seven points. Yep, very, very good here. I think, I think Japan would definitely want to replay this. This. If, if they get an opportunity to, to, to replay this uh, passage of uh, of the game where they really should have kept going but have uh, found their scoring stall. Well, they'll be happy they got one back there, Rio Nagai. Been a few changes uh, for India as well. As we come to the end of a third quarter, probably a definitive one. Uh, India winning that 18-13, and overall they lead Japan 50-36.
Welcome back to the fourth and final quarter in this M1 Asian Netball Championships match between Japan and India. And uh, we're getting news that uh, there is a change in GD. Reikagami is off and in comes Shinamiyo. Miya, Miyu Shina. Shina. Yeah. And that swap earlier on, as we said, the GK has now become earlier on the uh, goal scorer. Keiko Yoda. Might be a problem here. Oh, the goal attack is down. Uh, Asone, and she, Asone. that would be a big blow for India. She's hopping off. That's not a good sign. She has been by far their best attacker. And that also means that Yoda is gone back to her original position. Yes. That's unfortunate, isn't it? I mean, I, I thought Osone put in such a great performance there, especially in the second quarter when she started to get her shots in and uh, really brought um, Japan back into this game. Yep, she's been uh, very good indeed, Osone. So that is a a massive blow. So, goal scorer. Revert back to Keiko Yoda. Ryo Nagai is now the goal attack. Nami Osone is out. And I think, you know, Haruna Abe is... Uh, in right now in uh, as a goalkeeper and she's sporting a nice you know knee, knee strap there it looks like she's also nursing some kind of, of an injury there or maybe just keeping her knees steady in fact Shazad I, <laughs> I think the one thing about netball that I find most uh, disturbing, I guess, is the uh, number of knee injuries that these players pick up, uh, possibly because of the emotion of this particular game. Yeah, absolutely, and also, you know, it's a hard surface, isn't it? So you're putting a lot of pressure on that, a lot of twisting and turning. So it's a, a relatively common injury. Confirmation that we've just received then, as uh, Philip has mentioned earlier, is Haruna Abe has become the goalkeeper. And by the way, India are racing ahead here, already four up they in are. this quarter. Japan haven't actually s opened the scoring at all in the, uh, in the fourth quarter. They should be looking to get a move on. We've only got 12 minutes left on the clock. And are uh, having staged a rather nice comeback. In the uh, second quarter, they found themselves losing their way in the final third of the uh, third quarter. That guy's pulled one back, which is uh, a bit of a relief for her and Japan. Here's Yoda. And that guy exchanging passes with Hagiwara. does finally make its way in. Interesting, we haven't seen the, uh, the Sri Lankan players involved. Or rather the ones with uh, Sri Lankan heritage. Sri Lankan heritage, yeah. Yes. Here's Kirti. Now Yoda. Nagai opts to go back to Hagiwara. Yoda. And then Nagai. So we get that unimpeded now. Well, I have to say, they were four down at one point. Now it's just down to two. So it's been a, a nice little period here for the Japanese. It, it has. Uh Defended that brilliantly as well. 
They've just picked it up a notch. This is better from Japan. <laughs> and the commentator <laughs> curse strikes almost immediately, but they get possession back. <laughs> oh, nicely done. That guy now with a chance to just make it one between the two teams. Well, they're on a roll here, and they could draw level. Well, it looks to me, Shazad, that uh, maybe basketball is a far bigger game in Japan compared to netball, uh, given the achievements of their basketball team, as we recently saw them in the Asian games. But yes, can you imagine if they actually get a goal shooter or goal attack with a higher shooting percentage into the game? I mean, it will totally change things around for them. Yeah, I mean, if we look back particularly in the first and third quarters where the the gap was fairly big not yeah. fairly big i mean relative to everything uh, the other quarters then we know that they had a number of opportunities which they just didn't take but when they're in full flow like this they're not easy to do, deal with as we've seen well quarter on quarter they seem to be competitive but in the overall scheme of things right now we, we see that there's a 14 point gap and you know india well worth the lead to be honest, um, they have actually done really well. Uh, India, they have really you know, got a high you know, goal scored to goal attempts ratio. And um, they've just kept their noses in front throughout this entire game. And uh, not to be rattled by Japan as they make their little mini comebacks. Just doing enough to stay ahead. <sighs> That's the disappointing factor. Yeah, but they get another shot at it. Nagai. She makes no mistake at the second time of asking. And there have been just a few moments where that is again well done. They've kept possession here. It's a good interception there. And now Japan moving the uh, ball back up the court again. And they do it so well at times, don't they? Very quick. There's contact there. Now, Nagai is going to go for it. No, oh, it's oh. missed the chance, but Yoda saves the opportunity and scores. <laughs> well, Japan, for the second time in this match, have taken a lead in a quarter. The last time they did this, remember, India stung into action and responded robustly. And I wouldn't bet against India actually doing the same again in this quarter. Obstruction there, which they take advantage of. And well, they've brought it up to two. India will have possession of the ball here. Well, the gap is now down to, uh, down to 12 points. India leading 57-45. It's still relatively comfortable. Um, yeah. There's really no need to panic there for India. Just uh, keep on doing what they're doing. I've been really, really impressed by their two players up front, uh, the goal attack, yep. as well as the goal shooter, Gopala Krishna and uh, Kirti. Yeah, those two have been uh, excellent, haven't they? Japan still lead this quarter. If they can end on a high note like this, it really will be such a big boost for them. And it's back to two in the lead there for Nagai. Remind you that there are more matches to come here at the M1 Asian Netball Championships. Coming up in a while, Malaysia take on, sorry, Maldives take on Chinese Taipei. Excuse me, that's at 3 o'clock local time. That will be an exciting game as well, uh, to be honest. Uh, we just found out that the average age of the uh, Chinese Taipei team is, what, 14 years old? 14. <laughs> well, it's three points now ahead. Well, the last time these two teams met, as we like to remind our viewers again, uh, that was in the Asian Netball Championships in 2014. And uh, India won that one as well. And the gap there was uh, just a mere eight, eight goal difference, 60 to 52. So right now, uh, it's not really a surprise to see Japan closing back in. Yeah, it's uh, four in front here. It's just 10 at the moment. And India will be delighted with this. And what the Japanese have started doing is they've defended a little better now. Been a bit more aggressive, won the... The ball back a bit more. India pull one back. 
The gap is 11. Yoda does well. They're getting themselves into some good positions there. Yoda right under. And she's improved as well, hasn't she? Yes, yes. And I, I think it's, it's deceptively simple the way the uh, Japanese uh, players are splitting the Indian defense right now with the uh, cross court passes, just finding the open man, as, as they say, uh, the open player. See, that is a prime example of where the height is making a difference. It is. And, and uh, uh, Kagami's just a little, a little too short to get to that ball. And again, as, as I, I, I'd love to see the uh, overall statistics at, of, of the game later, the number of opportunities that were presented to India and the number of uh, goals they scored there. And I'm sure it is a lot higher than, than uh, what Japan has. They're just making the most. Well, they have really picked it up. I think they're shifting the ball so much quicker now, Japan, as well, when they have it. And India, just see a little bit more urgency about them. And it is at this stage of the last quarter that we saw India, you know, putting on the afterburners. And, and mm. you know, did, I'm, I, I'll be surprised if I don't see that again in this quarter. Yeah, surprisingly, haven't done that yet. And it is Japan at the moment outscoring their opponents here. They haven't managed to push past a four-point lead. Well, they get the opportunity now from the, uh, as the uh, Indian player commits a turnover there. And uh, Japan quickly moved the, w the ball. A chance to make it five, which they do. Five-point lead in this quarter, Philip, which means it's only nine overall. And his possession again. So that eight-point difference that we saw from the last time that these two met. Very this nice. is where it is now. <laughs> Now, 61 India, Japan 53. Is there, <laughs> is there some kind of almighty comeback in store? I mean, this could be something quite special, but three and a half minutes to do it. It's not, I don't think the timing is a problem, is it? I think there's enough time. It's just now whether India will hold their nerve. They get one back here. But there is a spring in the step of the Japanese team at the moment and Nagai has been on fire along with Yoda it's quite delightful to see what's happening here right now you like to you know you you, you wish that this has happened uh, earlier this happened a bit yeah. early in the game you know we, we could be you know having a really really tight match right now but as it is I still feel that you know India made the most of the opportunities and are very very uh, deserving of the lead they have right now oh even now Gopala Krishnapa Chances that she would have gobbled up at the first chance of asking. Not taken. Kirti. Five point gap, but Japan, they don't want to push and push now. Here's Yoda. They're just finding the range, aren't they, at the moment, Japan? A smile on their <laughs> face. They're enjoying themselves. And why not? Nagai. Prolific. Really has been. Back to six point lead. This is where they have just felt a little powerless. And that was a chance, wasn't it, for a turnover? That's a bit of good fortune there for India as well. But well played. Uh, Kupala Krishna there. If you're the Indian coach, you probably feel a little bit disappointed if your team ends up not winning all four quarters. It's just a, it's like keeping a clean sheet, say, in football. You've, you've done the hard work. You've won relatively convincingly. And this the last thing to do is to try and win every quarter. Well, Shazad, it's either going to be 4-0 or 3-1. Yeah. But it's still going to be a victory oh, yeah. for, for, for India. We're down to the last minute now. But I'm, I'm sure she'll, he'll be um, the uh, coach will be forgiving. Uh, it has been a grand effort from the players. Yeah, they're finishing with a bit of a flourish here, Japan, and there's about a minute to go. India would dearly love to, of course, have a, a clean sweep, and 
chance there. He's going to get another opportunity here, Kirti. 2015. Can Japan get one or two more before the end of this match? They won't win it, but they've given a really good fight in this final quarter. In fact, they've had two pretty good quarters overall. Still with Japan. Opted not to shoot there. Now Nagai. Makes it 21 points. That's oh, more than a third of their points have come in this quarter alone. Yes. It's great, great to watch this, this quarter. Final quick thoughts from you, Philip, on this match. I, I think it's a fair result. I think if it's an eight-point gap, it's exactly the same as we had the last time these two sides met. And it's been a really entertaining affair here. I like to see these two teams continue to progress up in a in the netball world actually well very entertaining and a lot of credit there to japan who fought hard in the end not quite enough india beat japan 65 57. All right, it is the end of the match, an exciting match over here. Team India taking on Team Japan. India took the victory, and I'm here with the captain, Kirti, and the vice captain, Ranjitha. They're going to tell us a little bit more about how their team performed during this competition. Now, how do you guys think you performed? That was a really strong challenge from Japan, especially in the last quarter. What do you think of your team's performance for this competition? Actually, uh, we lost our uh, stamina in the last quarter, and some uh, some areas went uh, less. So we need to improve in our attacking and also in defense. Uh, many thing, uh, many wrong all happened in the defense. We'll go on it and we'll improve our 
Time to re-strategize and come up with all those new strategies as well. Now, the next match you guys have is coming up tomorrow at 1 p.m. against Thailand. So how do you guys, how are you going to prepare differently for your match against Thailand? Yeah, we'll improve about our uh, mistakes and we'll uh, go through it. And we'll come up again uh, in a very good score. We'll uh, get on that. All right. Exciting stuff. Don't want to give away the strategy in case they're listening in. Definitely for sure. We expect great things. Thank you so much for joining me and congratulations once again on that victory. All right. A lot of excitement happening right here at the OCBC Arena. The next match is coming up next. Maldives takes on Chinese Taipei at 3 p.m.